triple C. I'ma make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really count the heat. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man, I still go. Go, go, go. <laughs> And this is brought to you by Jimmy Bard. So UFC 281 predictions. Let's start off with the main event. We got Israel Adesanya, the last style bender versus Alex Pereira. Pereira. Um, this is a fight of a guy that is 0-2 against a Brazilian that has only gotten better in his kickboxing. As Alexander Pereira continued to, to make his dominance in the sport of kickboxing, Israel Adesanya had already started MMA. And these are the things that I kind of take tend to take a look at. But at the same time, Pereira has gone sharper. He has gone uh, so much better with the striking, which is what Israel Adesanya tends to do. Um... Watching both of these fights, I've, I, had, I had a chance to watch the first fight and the second fight just to kind of, kind of give you guys a review. Uh, the first time they fought, Pereira beat uh, Israel. He beat him, I, I want to say, all three rounds or maybe two rounds to one. But either way, in kickboxing, whatever, like he, he won. And I'm not biased here. I'm not to do that. Now, the second fight, when they ended up fighting, uh, dude, Stylebender was, uh, <laughs> was pretty much uh, beating him. Like put him on skates like he said he did. Uh, he's been talking for those who haven't seen the fight. And the third had the ten count. Um, you know, the, the, I believe the second round ended, and uh, that third round after he was able to recover, I mean, Pereira just came out strong. Came out strong, missed the right hand, ended up throwing the hook. But when I see this matchup, I see who is it that's gonna win this fight. I mean, do you go with the guy, the kryptonite, the guy that is uh, that is 2-0 and o in Pereira? Or do you go with the guy that has been in the sport of mixed martial arts a lot longer than Pereira? You see, I think it's, uh, I think it's up for grabs. I really do. Um, I think if Pereira uh, is going to check a lot of the kicks that, that Israel is going to probably end up doing. I mean, obviously, let's look at who is it that he's training with. Pereira is training with Glover Teixeira. Glover Teixeira, that's all he does is he wrestles. His whole game plan is based on submissions and wrestling. And this is what's made him, you know, extremely successful. So you have a bigger guy, a 205er, a light heavyweight as a train, training partner who's helping you to defend and helping you get submissions. Who knows? Alex Pereira may come out and actually try to take down Israel Adesanya. Or vice versa. Israel Adesanya might take... Try to take down Alex Pereira down. But I just think the ball is swinging when it comes to that sense of what, who is it that's going to tactically uh, uh, eventually going to end up fighting that fight. The experience I'm going to have to go with Israel Adesanya. Um, the striking, which I, this is where I think the, 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 the fight's more likely going to go. More likely it's going to come down to the aggressor. If you can, if you can check the kick, if you can allow yourself from not getting leg kicked from Israel Adesanya, I think uh, I think that's his biggest threat. I think he's, uh, I think that's Israel's literally his biggest threat, and what makes him actually good is his discipline, his his distance recognition, his fakes, his feints, and how he's able to kick you. He'll invest, invest, invest. Call it boring, and sometimes you know some of the fights were boring, but it's actually a master class. He's doing a good job of breaking the foundation and doing X, Y, and Z. But let's cut to the chase. I just think Pereira's going to be... Uh, I just think Pereira's going to be very well prepared when you have a training partner like Glover Teixeira. You know, especially now, uh, you know, converting to Muslim, but you have a higher purpose. I mean, the ball for me in my eyes... Because I go back and I look at the Max Holloway fight versus Jose Aldo. When you're not well-rounded and you can't take the fight so where you want to take it, it's just going to come down. Who is it that's the better striker? And for that reason, guys, and I'm not hating, and I think Israel's done some amazing things, and I wouldn't count him out either, but I have to go with Alexander Pejeda for the simple fact that his kicks, his striking, he's focused more of that, and I'm just not sure if... 
Israel Asanya has that IQ to be able to show wrestling, to be able to do certain things that we haven't seen against a guy that he's 0-2 against. Nothing against Israel. I let that stuff go. He's done a lot of, you know, he's he's regardless of what what you want to call him, he's won each and every one of his fights. Yeah, they may be boring, but for that reason, I just got to go with the better striker because it's going to be a striking game. And my biggest question is, did Israel Adesanya actually make those improvements for MMA? Because he, if he did, if, if, he, if he does understand the MMA distance a little bit better, then, then I would have to go with Israel just based on experience. But I just don't see it, man. I see this a, a kickboxing match. And I, I do believe that someone's going to be finished. And I just don't. I, I think Pereira's... Uh, I think Pereira's rolling. I think he's confident. I think him being 0-2, you know, being 2-0 and against him. I think the trainer's rolling, so I'm going to have to go with Alex Pejeda. Is there any method of, of victory that, that you're expecting in this uh, trilogy fight? Well, it's it, it's, it's going to come down to who is it that's going to take space. The aggressors are going to win. Go back and watch those two fights. As you notice, like even in the first fight, the aggressor gets the gets the better take. Who is it that's going to take space? So Pereira's going to have to take space. Pereira, you can kick him yourself. Israel's stance is very, very wide, very wide. That's one thing that I would that I would end up doing. You know, it's wide, so you can kick, and you could he could also you could also take him down. And I think that I do believe the takedowns will be there, but you know, tactically, like the, like these are two guys that are. Very dominant one area. This is why, like, I look at the middleweight division. I'm just like, man, do these guys have really have tactics? This is why when I look at, like, the bantamweight division and things like that, like, dude, everybody's pretty good in every position. But that being said, this is going to be a stri striking war, a stand-up war. And I just got to go with the two-time glory world champ who's freshly into MMA, who is, who's fighting just a right opponent where he's going to be able to unleash his striking. So I'm going to have to go with uh, Pereira. You think by knockout or, or decision? What do you think? I think uh, I think it, I think it's 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 two ways. Pereira catches him with that left hook again, or with something different, or a knee, or uh, or or potentially he knocks him out. But again, man, Israel is smart, man. I do got to give credit what it's due because if Israel does beat him, it's gonna be it's gonna be based on decision. I think that his biggest thing is that limbo hook, but it's the same reason. Like it's got him, it's got him through Robert Whitaker, but it's also hurt him. With the fights with Pereira, if you, if you go back and you watch those fights, as Pereira would take space, he leans. He leans, and when you lean, you're out of position. You, you're out of position unless you time this thing correctly, as he did with Robert Whitaker, but I just I just don't see that. I think there's too much tape on him. I think Pereira, uh, I think Pereira's confident with the striking. The other question is, can Pereira go five rounds? You know, and that's the difference. If it stays on its feet 100%, five rounds ain't nothing. But if they start mixing it with wrestling and all that other stuff, you're, uh, you know, Israel Asanya has been taken down. He has proven to get up against Robert Whitaker. So, but I think the fight's going to go on its feet. Pereira by knockout or decision. Yeah, and quickly, because we, we have two separate videos um, breaking down these matchups in depth. But for the co-main event and the co-co-main event, uh, what are your predictions? So first, we'll do Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler. Who do you got for that? Um, for the for the uh, for the that's the co-co-main event. Yeah, co-co-main right? event. Yeah, yeah. the co-co-main event. Um, yeah, I think Chandler has a style to beat, to beat uh, to beat Poirier. But I think sometimes Chandler talks a little too much. You know, he talks about wrestling and all that, but he doesn't use it. I think if he does decide to use his wrestling, I think Michael Chandler easily beats Poirier. The top control, what Khabib showed, what uh, what Charles Oliveira showed. Like if if you guys can't take that cheat sheet and use that against your opponent, then then you're tactically, you know, there's a flaw on your tactics, and that's one thing that wrestlers don't do is they don't once they fall once they start to fall in love with the striking, like you know what I mean, like it's uh, they don't wrestle. Once you break my distance, I'm gonna take you down. You see what I'm saying, and that's one thing that because when you start wrestling, it does the 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 fight does become more fatigue on both sides, not just on you but your opponent too. But it also hits you too. This is why wrestling is the hardest base. This is why there's more champions in the sport of wrestling than any other division. You see, I'm sorry, than any other sport in the world. So for that reason, I don't know 
Uh, Michael Chandler, I haven't seen him compete. I haven't seen him wrestle. So for that reason, I'm going Dustin Poirier. And I think Dustin Poirier by decision or potentially knockout. Because there's one thing that Dustin Poirier does have. Dustin Poirier does have hands. And he don't care if you hit him. <laughs> Which is not always the best thing. But he's. Uh, I, always, I always wonder if... Uh, Poirier is freaking half Mexican because he's going to go out there and he's going to be a gladiator and a warrior. He's going to bring the fight. I like them both. If you guys want me to pick, if I'm going to bet my money, which I can't bet my money now, so thank you, UFC, um, I would have to go with uh, Poirier. Then finally, Zhang Wei Li, Carla Sparza, strawweight title fight. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think uh, Wei Li. I think Wei Li learned a lot. I think she learned a lot coming out here. You know, for a, a couple months that she was out here training with me, I think to the point where she feels comfortable with her distance game, uh, with her composure, with her hands, with her feet. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that she's gotten better at, and I think she's taken that. And uh, I think it's an I think it's an easy fight for for Wei Li. You know, if she did work those positions, because Carla Sparza does take people down from downtown and uh, there's a lot of things that you could do whether they're uppercuts front kicks things of that nature but uh i think Zhang Wei Li's train is just uh, pumping so i don't think there's much but again Carla Sparza she's able to cut distance be able to get her top control and that's one thing that you do have to respect with Carla Sparza she's got hands she i mean i'm sorry she has wrestling she has jiu-jitsu and she, she knows her bread and butter. She's not going to stand with Wei Lee. But I also go back and I see her fight, which was eight years ago. But it's still, I see her fight with uh, Joanna. And Joanna was able to defend her off and keep it on her feet and just pretty much just hurt her and beat her. She's evolved from then. Her last uh, fight that she had was not the funnest fight. But that being said, she's still dangerous. But Zhang Wei Li is a well-rounded fighter. You know, it's not like Carla Sparza has the Khabib type uh, style where they train two hours ground and pound hurting people. She's a real deal. And for that reason, I got to go Zhang Wei Li by stoppage. And it were between, um, you know, uh, and it were between the third and on up. I got Zhang Wei Li by stoppage. Last one. Uh Frankie Edgar, one of one of the the greatest fighters in UFC history, he's gonna have his last fight at MSG in his in his home state. Who do you have winning that one? Do you think Frankie Edgar gets the win against Chris Gutierrez in his last fight, or uh, is, I mean, Chris Gutierrez is just to, to give you a little background. He's won six or seven fights, and that that only fight that he didn't win was a draw. So he's he's a pretty not yeah a pretty hot yeah no. Strength. I've seen Gutierrez. There's one thing that Frankie's gonna have to Frankie's gonna have to really move. He's going to have to really move and get his agility going. You know, it doesn't matter if you fight in Jersey or New York. This guy, this guy's got power and he's younger. I've seen him do this. Dude's got, uh, this dude's got, if he doesn't land on Frankie, if Frankie's able to, uh, you know, point fight him as he typically does, he'll win the fight. But if this guy brings the pace and is able to kind of cut the, cut the cage with Frankie, San, with Frankie, with Frankie Edgar, I think he knocks out Frankie, you know, but that being said, um, that one's up in the air, you know, I'll be cheering for Frankie Edgar. I really would, even though he probably doesn't like me, <laughs> but I'm probably, I'm going to have to go with, uh, with Gutierrez, man. I think Gutierrez is power, his hands, um, he's younger. I think if he did the right thing and found the right training partners to mimic a Frankie Edgar, there's, there's patterns even with movements that you can possibly find. So I'm just going for the younger guy. I'm going to have to go with Gutierrez. So thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Jimmy Bars. Again, guys, my comeback is coming soon. I am here to take over, to take my belt, and I trust in Jimmy. The gluten-free bar from the citrus flavors to cookies and cream, they have it all. Check them out, Jimmy Bars. I'm out! So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out!